Hello everyone, welcome to my first Blender tutorial. This tutorial is based on the um, 3ds Max tutorial that was recently released on the Freddy W2 channel. And I'm going to show you how to do the same thing just in Blender. First thing, we have um, the default cube and the default lamp in the 3D view. We're not going to need it, so I'm just going to delete it. Next, um, we want to use the Cycles Render Engine, so select that here. And our project settings should be the size of the image, which is roughly widescreen PAL. Then we want to set the background image. To do this, we bring up the side menu by hitting N, activate background image, add image only in camera view, and open this. Um, now we're going to adjust the position of the camera. I'm going to top view. Just let me clear out the rotation and bring it back to um, directly facing straight from the ground. <coughs> Sorry. In the original tutorial, the camera was about 0 0.25 uh, meters off the ground. Blender doesn't really use meters or any other unit, it just uses Blender units. One of these squares is one Blender unit. And for this tutorial, I'm just going to say one Blender unit is 0 0.25 um, meters off the ground. So I'm going to bring it down there and let me bring it over here a little about here and back a little bit. So unfortunately we don't have an option to show a horizon in Blender, but we can cheat a little bit by adding a plane, bringing it up to the exact same position or the exact same height as the camera. You can see it's now also at position at one camera unit, uh, one blender unit above the ground. Uh, ah, sorry. Then we scale it up, um, make it much wider, and bring it back quite a bit. And now we can use it as sort of a horizon in camera view. To see it a little bit better, we should switch to wireframe view because it doesn't have any depth. If we would bring it back even further, it would in solid view disappear. Oh, wireframe view too, because I'm now above. There's a certain view limit. You could adjust it, but Okay, we use this as our horizon line and adjust, rotate the camera until it matches up. That looks about right. And then I'm also going to rotate the camera a bit sideways. Just like that, yes. 
Now that the horizon line and the camera is fixed, we can delete the horizon plane. We're not needed anymore. And lock all those camera positions. Okay. Next, I'm going to add a sphere, a simple UV sphere, and bring it up to the ground. I'm going to move it up in edit mode. You can see it in edit and object mode. The reason for that is if I move it up in edit mode, this little orange dot right here, you can see it stays in place. And that's the object origin. And if we scale now, it's going to scale away from the origin. So the um, it's the sphere is always going to stay on the ground like this. The size of the sphere in the original tutorial, it was um, 0 0.25 meters. And I said one blender unit is 0 0.25 meters, so it's already okay. The radius is exactly one of these squares. Looks good. I'm going to move it to the side a little bit and then duplicate it. So we have two spheres right here. Next thing we need is a ground plane. And by the way, new objects are added at the position of this cursor. And when you want to, want to bring it back to the origin, just hit Shift S, cursor to center. Add a plane, scale it up. That should be good. And if we hit render now, we can see two spheres on the plane and some shadow. And you notice the image is quite noisy. And that's because in the render, render settings, I have set the sample number quite low. If we increase that, the image is going to get much better, but also the render time increases. So it's kind of a trade off. Next thing we need is a lamp, a sun lamp. Just add it, lamp sun back. So, front view, bring it up. That looks okay. And if we render now, we can see there are some nice shadow, but we also see those spheres, they're not really, they don't really have a smooth surface. To fix this, we select them and set shading to smooth. Hit F12 to render. And we have nice smooth spheres with shadow. That looks about right. Now we're going to add the materials. To do that, we select the spheres, go to the materials panel, add a new one. The chrome material is just a glossy shader. The default one already looks quite good. And 
the second sphere just needs a standard diffuse shader. Hit F12 and we see a chrome ball and a gray ball. Now, to get the reflections, we sorry go to the world settings add a environment texture open the image this and if you render now we see the chrome ball has reflections also the image has gotten a little bit brighter because um, the environment image also adds lighting, but we see in the background, we see this environment image set as the sky image, so to speak. We don't want that, so we're going to the render settings and at film enable transparent. If we render now, we just have our ground plane and these two spheres. Now it's time to add the ground texture to the plane. We're going to do that using a function called project from view. And this tends to work better if we subdivide the plane sometime just to add a little bit more geometry because it just works better that way. Go to edit mode and subdivide it. Then hit project from view. This is going to generate um, a UV map that contains the texture coordinates. And then we just add a new material, set a image texture, and we just choose that image that we already have loaded and we see the ground has now the right texture that we need. Okay, now how do we get um, the original image to be the background? To do that we switch to compositing view use nodes and we already have our render result right here we still need the original image we add let me maximize this the image as a input node we use a alpha over node right here to add this doesn't look right yes hit f12 and the image in the background is much too large that is because if you remember i've set the render size to 50 percent so our render result right here is just 50 percent of the size but the image still has the original size to fix that we add a scale node and set it to render size. And if we render now, everything looks fine. Now back to default view, world settings. And if you want environment lighting, the option is called ambient occlusion in Blender. And we will see that the image gets much brighter. We can see clearly his jeans are brighter than the rest down here than at the rest at the top of the frame. To fix that, we can decrease the factor of the ambient occlusion. And the reflections also look a bit bright, too bright. So let's decrease the strength of the environment texture. 
hit F12 and looks good. Let me give this one more render at 100% render size just to show a sort of final result. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed it and now you know how to do to add objects to a real scene in Blender. Goodbye and have fun.